My name is Sterling Quinn. I'm a doctoral student in geography at the Pennsylvania State University, um, or Penn State. I'm also an instructor in the Master of GIS program there, and uh, formerly I worked for Esri as a software engineer. However, I am somewhat new to OpenStreetMap. Uh, if you go back one year ago, I had not ever edited the map, so this talk really describes a, a process, a, um, a journey, and a project that's sort of in its infancy. Uh, but we wanted to share it because uh, we thought it might be valuable. Um, I'll be talking today about um, capturing uh, local knowledge of urban food resources in OpenStreetMap and displaying that to, a public in, to the public in a user-friendly way. But my hope is that these concepts can be applied uh, in other locales or even with other themes. This is really just a project of how do you take a certain theme, organize the work around it, and get it started in OpenStreetMap for a particular geographic jurisdiction. Um, this project really starts when uh, I started uh, working with uh, Dr. Lakshman Yap at Penn State. He's a human geographer. This is not that we have that much money, but he's interested in economics of things and geographies of uh, poverty and urban agriculture and uh, how to meet the, the unique needs that are available or that are, exist in a place using the resources that are available. And uh, he has an interesting way of looking at the economy um, that, is, um, that is looking at um, it from two angles. The angle of exchange value, which is the amount of money that things can be exchanged for, and use values, which are things that satisfy immediate human needs, and fresh, healthy food being one of those use values. Uh, we're, he's interested in studying how that food is produced in, in Philadelphia. And so when I told him about OpenStreetMap, we both got excited and thought, hey, OpenStreetMap would be a really nice common repository for these use values or these useful resources. Because often those resources uh, are known generally by the, the local people in the place. Sometimes they may be missed if you have a broad sensor that's trying to cover the entire city or the entire, uh, the entire state or the entire country. So um, uh, we thought this would be a nice place for people to store that information and it might be better than the model of uh, everybody has their own Excel spreadsheet and keeps a list of the items. Uh, so uh, we thought we'd give this a try. And why is OpenStreetMap a good place to store this local knowledge? Well, first of all, it's flexible. So because of its tagging structure, where you can propose tags, the community um, bolts on them. Uh, even if uh, you, know, you don't get the bolts you need right away, you can start using it as an example implementation. Uh, really, you can store any kind of thing. And it's common. Anybody can put data in, anybody can get the data out. So there's no restrictions on access or what you can use the data for. And finally, it has potential uh, for anybody to take action. So they have agency to, to put their place on the map, even if it's been unmapped or undermapped or neglected by other types of maps. Um, a big inspiration for me is the Map Cubera project. Many of you probably know about this. Uh, this is uh, work by Hagen and Marin uh, that they did in Kenya in the slum of uh, Kibera in Nairobi. Uh, this area had often been a blank spot in online maps surrounded by the rest of the city, even though hundreds of thousands of people lived there and had their livelihoods in, the, in that neighborhood. And so they embarked on a project where they identified some basic needs within the community that they wanted to map, such as clean water, uh, points of fuel, uh, schools, health clinics, churches, and so on. And they enlisted local volunteers to do this. And you can see the rich um, landscape that appeared. It's not that that a landscape just appeared on the ground. It was always there, but it got a place on the map. And so that was, that's what, it was inspiring to me. And I believe that this worked because they identified a focused set of features. You know, they had some boundaries on it. They knew what they wanted to do. They had a, a geographic area, a bounding box. And then they had enthusiastic volunteers who contributed their local knowledge and their time and efforts. And so we wanted to see if we could do the same sort of approach uh, with this particular issue, that uh, uh, food production and distribution in Philadelphia. Uh, the first step then was to decide what things do we map. Uh, so this was our focused list of places where food was produced, such as urban farms and gardens. Um, farms that do community supported agriculture programs where you pay a share once a season and each week you get a, a box of fresh produce that you can go pick up at a certain pickup point. Those were places where food was produced. Also where food was distributed, so farmers markets, uh, food banks and soup kitchens and so on. 
So this was our list. And then the next step was to see how is this stuff already being mapped in OpenStreetMap? Is anybody doing this? Um, and in many cases, there were already some tags that existed that were a pretty good fit for what we were doing. Um, so we wanted to be consistent with what the community was already doing uh, in this project. And these are just some of the ones for marking things like farms, gardens. Um, you can use the shop tag to indicate where things are being sold. Um, and uh, uh, there's already a tag for a food bank under a social facility. So we use these whenever possible. There were a few types of things that we wanted, where we wanted to be a little more specific or where we proposed new tags. So um, the tag for food bank was an umbrella tag for any kind of thing, whether they're handing out boxes of food or whether they're preparing hot meals. So we proposed this soup kitchen tag. Uh, for community supported agriculture, where you pick up the weekly boxes of produce from a certain point, there was no uh, means of mapping that that we found. So we proposed a, a way to do that, and we just started using it. Um, these are in the voting stage. I invite you to check them out and comment on them and vote on them if you would like. But we've also started using them just so that there will be a nice reference implementation for that tag if indeed it is approved or if people who are considering the tag for voting want to see some actual examples of features, we've got them in there. Um, so that's the intent of that. And once we had pulled together the, the tags we wanted to use, uh, we, create, we created a themed wiki page on the OpenStreetMap wiki. So under mapping projects, you can create a page where you organize the work around a certain theme. And we couldn't find a theme around food production or in, in academia, it's uh, called food security. So we just made this page. And so this is where we give some of the common tags that we like to put on those, those items. And so we invited at the bottom of the page anybody who is interested in doing this to, to mark their city and, and where they were working and provide comments. So now we have a framework for adding food resources into OpenStreetMap. We wanted to do this in Philadelphia. And so we had collected some information. Um, our researchers there had collected people's lists of farms and farmers markets and gardens. And uh, we also wanted to supplement that with local knowledge. So we scheduled an event. I guess our first intent was to uh, work with the existing OpenStreetMap community in Philadelphia. Um, but unfortunately, we couldn't find that there was an active community organized on the OpenStreetMap wiki. So um, we went to the groups in Philadelphia that are interested in geography and GIS. And there's at least one very active one on meetup.com called GeoPhilly. And they were very enthusiastic about helping us to promote a mapathon for food resources. We also advertised among students, other technical websites. There's an urban farming list serve, so we cast a really broad net because we wanted to get people from all areas of this topic. And that's what we got. Um, we scheduled a room last month um, in the Free Library of Philadelphia. This is just a branch library in North Philadelphia that was easily accessible. And we had a librarian who believed in us. When I explained OpenStreetMap, she was very enthusiastic. That's the kind of person you want to find to help you with your mapathon. Um, so we had this event. We had about 15 people there from all those realms that I mentioned. And we just worked together. We started with a little bit of a training on how to use OpenStreetMap. We just used the ID editor in the browser because that's an easy way to get started. Um, we showed them that wiki page and gave them some focused tasks. And we said, get into groups and work on this. Here's some lists of resources we know. You can put those in, but please trump that list with your own knowledge. So if we give you a list of farmer's markets and you know that one of those is closed because it's around the corner from your house, don't put it in or delete it. If you know of one that's not on this list, please add it. Put your local knowledge in. This was also helpful when we had people uh, who wanted to cross-check information. So we had a guy there who was trying to digitize an urban farm and he wasn't quite sure from the imagery where it was. So uh, we just shouted out in the room, hey, has anybody been to Farm X? And we had a guy from the urban farming community who's like, oh yeah, I know where that is. So they got together by the computer screen and were working on making sure that that information was accurate. Um, a lesson I learned from this is that people really get OpenStreetMap. They get excited about it. Um, and they can be trained in a short amount of time, maybe half an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, however, when they get started, it can take a while to get the hang of it. So they were successful at putting things into OSM, but um, they didn't get quite as much work done as we had thought during a period of three or four hours. So plan for that if you do it, if you do a mapathon. Some of them were very enthusiastic and took some work home to do. We had task sheets of certain things, and that was helpful. So we could just hand them a piece of paper with some tags, and 
and a task, and, and they really grew with that. And uh, afterwards, uh, for the additional data that we did not get entered, uh, we worked with uh, undergraduate volunteers at Penn State who were very happy to edit OSM. Uh, these are mostly geography majors who are studying GIS, and it was great for them to be able to work on a, on a meaningful project, so they loved that. Once the data was in OpenStreetMap, how do we display it or share it? Well, this is what um, urban farms and gardens look like in the default renderer on OpenStreetMap.org. So uh, I like them because now we have like this green space in the middle of a community. And a lot of these neighborhoods had just been blank grids of streets before. I mean, the streets were there, but there was nothing else. And this shows that there's some vibrancy in the community, that there's something going on. And uh, unfortunately, some of the other items do not appear in the default renderer. So things like farmers markets and food banks are not there. Hopefully by putting more of these in, we can might encourage some movement on that. But uh, we can also use the data just in our own custom maps. So uh, I'd like to demonstrate this one, which is, this is a project in its infancy still. Uh, we're still working on adding some data here, but I, we wanted to make it live prior to this conference so people could check it out. Um, this is hosted on a Penn State uh, server, but it's the, it's the product of this project, and we called it the Philly Fresh Food Map. Um, I think I have pretty good internet here, so I'll just demonstrate it instead of showing a slide. So it just starts with the basic view of the city. The background map is uh, a custom map that we, I uh, made with Tile Mill. Um, just using OpenStreetMap uh, street data and it's designed to be muted so that you can see the, the things on top. The purpose of this application was to be very focused on showing food resources and so we use the OpenStreetMap query APIs um, to just query the things that we wanted, gardens and farms. Uh, we use the GDAL processing library to uh, convert this to GeoJSON and clip it to the boundary of Philadelphia. And so those are the layers that you see on top. By default, you see the gardens and farms, but you can choose to zoom in to any neighborhood. These are uh, Zillow neighborhoods that, we, that are available uh, for, for free on the Zillow.com website. Um, so that allows us to, to narrow the geography. And then once you're zoomed in, you can turn on other resources. So here's the food, food pantries and food banks or the farmer's markets in this area. And then you can click any item here um, and see some of the principal tags that people have put, such as the name, the address, and the operating hours, or the opening hours in OSM. So we still have some development to do here. We have some other data to enter, but the, the guts of this application are here uh, for you to browse and look at. This was made using open layers with uh, the Bootstrap framework. Um, one thing that we learned at the Mapathon was that people, when we showed this to some community uh, organizers who showed up at the Mapathon, they said, this is awesome, but how do we get an Excel spreadsheet of this data? <laughs> like they saw the map and they saw that utility, but they said, hey, some of our people in our neighborhoods don't have internet access. They won't be able to use this map. And we work with people on the ground, so we'd like to give out lists or maybe print paper maps. There are other requests to be able to print the map. And um, okay, I. Uh, I don't have that implemented other than saying file print on the browser, but uh, we did uh, write a little script that changed the GeoJSON into Excel spreadsheets so people can download the data. Also, if you click uh, about this map, it tells a little bit about this project, who we are, uh, why we're doing this, and the data we used. And uh, finally, for everybody here, if you want to use, uh, take a look at the pre-processing scripts we use to pull this data from OSM, clip it, um, uh, the script we use to convert GeoJSON into uh, Excel file, this is all here. You can download that. And then you can send me comments about my Python code, how I can improve it. Because <laughs> I consider myself a, uh, just an intermediate Python programmer, if that. Uh, but this is a lot of fun. So um, these are the building blocks. I think I mentioned them all. I'm not a bootstrap whiz either. so. I, pretty much the default bootstrap theme. If you've got uh, suggestions on how I can improve that, I'd love to take them. Um, some challenges with this project that we acknowledge is uh, maintaining, maintaining the data and getting consistency and coverage. Uh, when we told people about this project, they often said, hey, uh, I've been keeping lists of this on my own for a while. Let me send you my spreadsheet. And so we got a lot of spreadsheets from people, but we don't know if, if we've covered everything. 
Maintaining the data will, um, will largely depend on how uh, people want to use this application. We sort of did this, uh, this app as an exercise just to see what would happen. We see some momentum with people wanting to grab onto it. So uh, we got some attention, um, we caught the attention of the Food Policy Action Committee there. We chatted with them about, well, what if we wanted to store this information in, in OpenStreetMap from a, from a city perspective? Uh, how would we maintain the data there? And we said, okay, we'll put in all the data we know and you'll have a reference and you can decide if you want to do that. Um, one nice thing about this approach is if somebody sees something on the map and they say, well, that's out of date, I know that's wrong, we can say, well, just go to OpenStreetMap and edit it and our scripts update every night so uh, by tomorrow you should see the edit in the map. So you have the power to, to edit this map. You don't have to wait for anybody to do an update cycle. So our next phase of this project will be getting this automated so that it runs on a nightly basis and we can have, uh, have local citizens have power over the map. One thing we learned from our Mapathon is that it's a lot easier for people to put data into OpenStreetMap than to get it out. So you can train lay people to easily edit using ID, the bar has been lowered there, the entry bar has been lowered, but getting the data out in certain formats such as where's my Excel spreadsheet if I just type this tag. That's an area where I think the OSM community can do some work. I've had, um, I think the overpass turbo tool is a good uh, tool to use. Um, also the new uh, commands in uh, QGIS for retrieving OSM data are very helpful. So there's progress in that realm, but as community members, I think this is where we can, can be aware that there is a need. Just to conclude, uh, something I learned from this project is that, that OpenStreetMap is, is really more than a street map. I mean, uh, we've got these commercial uh, online maps out there, Google Maps, Bing Maps, Esri, ArcGIS Online. Those are richly detailed and beautiful maps. Um, but we need a map to be something more than just an image that tells us how to get to the nearest pizza restaurant. I mean, we can have this OpenStreetMap as a rich database of community resources um, that the people know about and use, even if they don't yield any monetary benefit or advertising revenue they may be of great value to the community. That's what a lot of these food resources are. OpenStreetMap was an easy sell. Once we started explaining this to people, what we were doing, they got excited about it. We had many volunteers. And then don't be afraid to dive in and organize stuff. I mean, when we saw there was no OpenStreetMap active community in Philadelphia, that didn't stop us from going ahead and organizing it, but it also didn't stop anybody from coming either. So people wanted to participate. And um, you can accomplish a lot in just a, in just a short amount of time with, with OpenStreetMap. Um, this sort of a project doesn't happen with just one person. I'd like to thank uh, the, uh, the faculty and other students at Penn State who worked on this, especially undergraduates who are very enthusiastic about helping to map these resources, as well as the people in Philadelphia who showed up to the Mapathon, and the city, uh, uh, the city leaders and organizers there who were interested in this project. I'd also like to thank the scholarship sponsors for this uh, conference for helping me to attend. And I think we have a couple minutes for questions. How many minutes do we have? Here's five minutes. Any points of clarification? Go ahead. Um, are you aware the USDA has a database of farmers' targets across the nation that um, they offer mostly this API, but I'm pretty sure you have it to like 9,000 farmers' That's a good tip. I'd like to look into that USDA source. One thing I, we saw was that there's sources at a lot of scales. So at a neighborhood scale, at a city scale, and I had not heard about this national scale. So I'll, I'll make note of that. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. Okay, question over there. Bob, speaking of farmer's markets, you, you can get the MapNIC standard render to, to render a farmer's market if you do amenity equals marketplace as a polygon. And you'll get this sort of grayish, um, looks like a pedestrian zone kind of thing. But if you give it an additional name tag of, you know, um, downtown farmer's market, it'll, it'll show up on, on display on the regular MapNIC render. Okay, so MapNIC can render uh, farmer's markets as polygons. Do equals, equals marketplace as a, as a polygon. That was a challenge. One challenge we had when designing this custom map is, okay, do we tell everybody to map stuff as points or as polygons? Because then we've got to handle that in our code of, you know, how are we going to display this using a point symbol or a polygon symbol? I believe that's still a, a hole in this project or a weakness that you know, we need to handle those cases where somebody goes in really enthusiastic and wants to trace the boundary of the market rather than just dropping a point on the map. So that's a, that's a difficulty. Well, Go ahead. I have a friend in open street map is the area of open street has gotten better and become more inclined to do polygons and less inclined to drop points. 
So the trend is going to polygons. Yeah, well, you can see that when you look see all the building footprints in OSM of you know, what people were doing. Who would have thought, you know, seven or eight years ago that that, that would be the level we get to? Go ahead. Is there something in the data that indicates for like a farmer's market, maybe it's only one day a week, like it's not always there, or maybe in the winter it might be gone for months at a time? Good, good question. So farmer's markets are seasonal. How do you indicate that? Uh, we use the opening hours tag, which... Uh, the documentation for that is very long and it appears complicated, but it has, it's very flexible in that it has ways of putting in uh, what days of the week is open. And we had our editors even putting in like what season or month that, that it was open. So uh, we used that opening hours tag to indicate that. Now parsing all that information if you want it to look really nice and user friendly, um, that's some other work that you might have to do in your client application because sometimes the information people put in that opening hours tag is, is very long and detailed. Like they have you use military time or the 24 hour clock. If you don't want that to show up, then you gotta write a bunch of a parsing code. So, Also, when you indicate the things in that tag, you want them to be very consistent with the documentation in case other people are trying to parse it that who you weren't aware of. So, Good question. Others? Okay, thank you very much, it's been fun.